We have one last concept to cover before the end of this paper. Electromagnetic induction. This is the process we use to get electricity from magnetism. In other words, how we get our power. Another term for electromagnetic induction is the generator effect. For this video, I'm going to explain what the generator effect is and its consequences for modern society. This is easiest to show with a solenoid, a piece of wire wound into a coil. The solenoid you see here has a core of iron to the middle, which strengthens the magnetic field created when you pass a current through it. Here is another coil of wire which looks much the same, except it doesn't have an iron core. The generator effect is most easily seen if the coil is hollow. What's important is that the coil isn't connected to anything. There's nothing here but copper wire, so there can't be any electrical current, right? Let's take a bar magnet and move it close to the coil like this. To move the magnet, we need to apply a force to it. What happens when it enters the coil and goes inside the wire? Well, the force we apply to the magnet is counteracted by a force going in the opposite direction. The coil applies a force on the magnet, trying to push it back out. How does that happen? It's to do with Newton's third law, which says that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. As the magnet is pushed into the coil, it produces an equal and opposite force to provide balance. Another way of saying this is that forces come in pairs. What if you remove the magnet from the coil? This time you apply a force to pull it out, but does the coil do anything about that? Yes it does. Again, there's a second force acting in the opposite direction to how the magnet's moving. The magnet is being pulled out, but the coil tries to pull it back in. We have a special name for this. It's called Lenz's Law. I will come back to this law in a moment. Are you wondering where that opposing force comes from? It's because as the magnet moves in or out of the coil, it creates an electrical current in it. Even though the wire you see is not connected to a battery, we can get current to flow through it using nothing more than a moving magnet. It has to be moving though. If the magnet just sits still, you don't get any current, even if it's right in the middle of the coil. If you can make a current, that means you can also make a voltage across the coil. We call this an induced voltage, one that comes from magnetic interactions instead of a battery. In the olden days, people called this electromotive force. You will probably hear this term in your classroom at some point, but don't be misled by it. Induced voltage is not a force. It's still measured in volts and not in newtons. Your formula sheet contains this great equation, V equals BVL. The big V means induced voltage, and the small V is the speed of whatever's moving. You see, you can either move the magnet, or you can hold the magnet still and move the coil of wire around. They both produce the same effect, they just have to be moving relative to each other. Capital B in this equation is the strength of the magnetic field you have, while capital L is the length of wire that cuts across that field. You can also work out the direction of the current induced in a straight piece of wire. It's time to practice the right hand slap rule. In this situation, you have a uniform magnetic field going into the screen. The wire is being pushed downward at a certain speed. Which way do you think the induced current will flow? If you use the rule, your thumb should point to the left. So that's the direction of induced current. If you calculate the voltage induced and know the resistance of the wire, you can also find how much current is flowing. Exam questions usually ask you about the flow of electrons in a situation like this. So remember that electrons flow in the opposite direction to what the right hand rules predict. Now we can look at Lenz's law in more detail. The law says that the direction of an induced current creates a force which opposes the change that created it. If you push a magnet into a coil of wire, that induces a current which creates a magnetic field around the wire which in turn creates a magnetic force that opposes the movement of the magnet. If this is a strange concept to you, don't worry. 
you learn a lot more about Lenz's law and induction in level 3 physics. What we've seen here is the generator effect, how you get electric current from magnetism. Why do we call it the generator effect? Because it's how generators and turbines work. Hydroelectric dams, for example, contain huge magnets inside wire coils. When water flows through the dam, it pushes on turbine blades that make the magnets spin. What comes out is clean power. Wind turbines work by the same principle, but instead of using water to spin large magnets, they use moving air. All of this is to get power to your home. Think of all the things that make your life comfortable and are powered by electricity. That's the end of this video. Congratulations on coming so far. You're just a few questions away from the end of 2.6 Electricity and Electromagnetism. Good luck and thanks for watching.